Hi, welcome back. It's Crunchy with another instructional video for the V-Skylab C47 Skytrain FLP, which is an add-on for X-Plane Flight Simulator 11 point whatever. Now, I've already shown you a little bit of the plane with a little flight, but my aim today is to do a more in-depth tutorial going through how exactly to get this plane up and running. As I've said before, this is supposed to be a realistic simulation of the plane by V-Skylabs. So yeah, we've got maximum realism, experimental flight model. I've got some sliders set up for my X56 hot ass and joystick. We're using C47 version 4.0 R3, which has just been released in the last 24 hours. Today is the 11th of October, 2021. As you can see, we're in this American military transport plane. I'm very grateful to somebody called Will Davies, who is called Amaria who provided me with this skin. Nicely, this gentleman has provided some background and provides, and always provides some background to the skins and liveries that he makes for his airplanes, as far as I can see. And the information he gives is this. Dragamut is a restored 1944 C-47, currently owned by a company called Aero Legends in the UK, and who use it in roles such as parachuting and air displays, including their Battle of Britain air show. From the Aero Legends website, who own the real aeroplane, they say this Douglas C-47 number 19345 was delivered to the United States Air Force on the 20th of December 1943. It was allocated to 87th Troop Carrier Squadron based at Greenham Common in England and equipped as a glider pickup. The crew gave the name Dragamut, slang for drag them out in Scottish, Geordie, or something like that, anyway, Northern English, was known to have dropped 18 paratroopers of the US 82nd Airborne Division just behind the Normandy beachheads near St. Mary Eglise. Subsequently, in September 1944, the aircraft was transferred to the RAF with the British serial number TS-422, and with them saw action in Operation Market Garden. As the war came to an end, this decoder was transferred to the Royal Canadian Air Force, and after being grounded for some years, the aircraft was readied for flight and made a seven-day trip back to the UK, where it was restored to its present condition. Obviously, it's got some doors you can open there that you can see. You can even see the name of the pilot there, Pilot Lieutenant O.H. Allen Jr., which is nice. Now this variant of the C-47, as V-Skylabs call it, is based on the C-47B variant, which was designed for high altitude flying. It is equipped with two 1200 horsepower Pratt & Whitney 14-cylinder twin WASP R183090C engines, driving Hamilton paddle-bladed fully feathering propellers. Each engine is equipped with a two-speed internal blower for supercharged power, which we'll get to later. We are at Arkansas International, that's a KBYH, ramp C3. So moving inside, now I've set up some keys of course to quickly move the camera to certain angles. Zero is looking from the back, right there the green part is the hydraulic column with certain cocks and things for the and taps for the autopilot. You can't switch the port autopilot on. I'll just go through a few of these things you can see. This is the flaps handle. This is the latch that you must use for the gear. I'll just uh, show this in action. I've got this set up on one of my buttons. So if I got the same switch, which is a two way switch, if I do this, the latch comes up and unlocks, meaning you can use the gear handle, which I'll just show you now. The gear handle is there. Obviously that would raise the, the gear. This would lower the gear. And then after you'd lowered or raised it either way, you need to relock it by pressing the switch. This is the fire extinguisher panels. These all work. So if you have a fire, you can, uh, which we won't because I've got the, the danger of that switched off, you can uh, put the fire out. This is to unlock the tail wheel, which I've got set up on a button on my joystick. Tail wheel is free. And I'm tail wheel is locked. Somebody enunciates that. This is the autopilot on off switch. But you must have this on first. I don't know why the legend isn't there. But anyway, you can. This is the trim wheel. 
You can see me adjusting the elevator trim. Uh, this this is the fuel mix mixture control. These are the propeller controls and obviously I've got my throttle set up. Now here you can see I'm using individual throttle controls so ideally in an ideal world you should have a throttle with two engine controls. You can unlock them and have one or the other powered up. This is important on the ground when taxiing because you use differential power on the engines to help to turn the aircraft left or right. Back to this view here, this button three. We've got the co-pilot seat there. This is a look at the console whereby you can use the controls. For instance, the latch, the throttles, but you can also set up the fuel tanks, which we'll do now. So I've gone on to the left fuel tank. If I use the co-pilot seat, We've got to choose the left. We can choose the left tank. This here, you can see, is the fuel indicator, which is on left main. We can see how much is in the right main. And I believe there are some click points down here although I don't see them myself, to, to indicate the fuel. This here, these here, I'll just come back. These here are the landing gear hydraulic pressure gauges. There. On here you can see the cowl flaps controls, which can be either closed, trail or open. Other midway points aren't modelled in the game. I've heard you can use these on trail kind of like all the time. You can open the windows, which might be beneficial when starting off. This window is already open. Um, on the leather hoods, if you press those, you can start up the oxygen flow, which is modelled. And you have a oxygen flow meters here, blinkers, and a pressure there. We won't be needing oxygen because we're only going to be flying to about 5,000 feet. So we don't really need that. Um, on the console as well, I should have said, um, where are we? Console controls, there are, I'll just tilt that up. There are the carb heat. I'm not sure how much they are modelled. But I think you can leave them in the cold position. It doesn't really matter. You've got a conversion chart here for the use of the pilots. Converting miles to knots and temperature differences as well. There's little charts as you can see all over. Um, going back to the console. Um, you have the parking brake here. Which is only slightly smaller than the tail wheel unlock. But anyway... That's, tail I think that's, tail that's on. use that by hand, but I've got it set up for a pinky, which you can hear me clicking. And I think that's on. Right, so, what other things to show you? Here, on the left side of the cockpit wall, this is the supercharger control, two settings, a low blower and a high blower setting. These are for ensuring more power when you're at high altitude. I think the low blower has got a, a ratio of 7.1 to 1, whereas the high blower ratio has got a setting of 8.7 to 1, I believe. But again, we won't be needing that because we don't we won't be going higher than 10,000 feet. This here in the middle of the console is the Sperry Autopilot, which you can use. You can change these dials height-wise and aileron-wise, roll-wise, by using these when you have the autopilot switched on. This is a more modern system, which we'll ignore because we're going to be flying as per 1930 style. On here, there are certain indicator lights. 
for the uh, gear and flaps and things like that there's a setting here which you can have on which is like a novice tail wheel control which i will use because it is quite difficult to handle this on the ground as i say so we'll keep that on right um as i said before you can click on the compass and get some modern gns 530s up but we won't be using those so Looking at the top panel, what do we need to do? Well, we need to ensure that the brake is on. We've walked around the craft and everything is safe. So first things first, we will switch on the master battery. The generator light comes on. Um, regarding the booster pumps, these, these must never be switched on when the engine is off. But once the engine is on, you can put them on. I've flown and I never use them. But again, I think they're for use, use at high altitude for when the fuel pressure flow is quite low. So we're going to switch the generators on now, the left generator and the right generator. I think we'll start off by setting the left engine away first. We need the inverters on. So looking at the panel now, some things should have come to life. You can see these lights are on, the clock is ticking away. These handles here, I forgot to mention, they are the um, rudder trim. And you've also got an aerolon trim somewhere, I'm not sure where. Carburetor de-ice, these de-icing things, these are actually do also work on the model of the plane. The wing icing effect is all totally realised in the game in that the, the right conditions of weather, the plane will ice up, the controls will ice up, the flaps will ice up, the elevator will ice up and it will make it difficult to control the, the aircraft. So we've got obviously pitot heat and we've also got wing de-icing, all kinds of things like that. So anyway, let's put our strobe on. Our nav light on, our inverters are on, our boost pumpers are off, our generators are on, our carburetor de icer doesn't need to be used in these conditions. So we'll just check outside, bear with me. Yes, our recognition lights are on, good. Back to the upper panel. Right, the next thing to do. We need, oh, I should also say, <laughs> I'm a bit flying around all over the place here. We have some window wipers here, which work, but which we don't need today. Next thing to do is switch the magnetos on. I'm going to switch them to both. Turn them on. They're on. And we're going to advance forward our right throttle. Uh, no, we're going to do our left first, aren't we? I didn't say. We're going to advance forward our left throttle slightly. Let's have a look. So we've and so our left throttle there, you can see left throttle moving there. There you see better from that view. So it's about like so. Back to the panel and we're going to press our starter. Looking outside, we see the left engine has started. All good so far. You can see the strobe light flashing underneath the aircraft there, back inside. So now I'm going to drop that throttle a little. And I'm going to advance the right throttle to an equal amount. So that may be a little bit more. Back up to the panel and press right engine start. Have to hold it for a few seconds. Both engines are started. Guess what I should have done first, stupidly, is close these doors. Let all the paratroopers get in. That's them happy. Um, we can put these boosters on now, I guess.
passing. I don't know what a passing light is, but it doesn't seem to be modelled. Landing lights on. Almost ready to go. Like as I say, we're going to. I'm just dropping the throttle slightly. Should have had those on rich, really. I think we'll turn the propellers up as well. A little bit more power. Um, regarding takeoff, I think we need a bit of a nose down attitude. Now I don't see any lever or marker which allows you to determine how much trim you have on. I think it, we need quite a bit there. Um, and you can see on these, we don't. We can put those back to zero. Doesn't seem to make much difference. So I'm just going to follow these taxi, yellow taxi lines out. Now, um, the way to get the airplane to turn is you need more power on the right engine towards the less powerful side so I'm, put, I'm winding the throttle up on the right engine and if I start to I see we've got the, the newbie tailwheel thing on now if we really want to make really acute turns we can take the tailwheel lock off see but it's turning quite nicely there I say one of the most difficult things about this plane is the taxiing on the ground. Need a bit more right engine power, I think. If I take the tail wheel off, it will turn a lot more easily. And I'll lock it, and then that will put both engines kind of equal now. Don't want to be going too fast. Obviously I'm cheating by using the outside view here. But I'm going to slow down a bit because I'm not really sure where we're going here. I've taken up quite a bit of throttle here. I'm going to make the turn, so I'm going to knock off the left engine and increase the right engine. Move the camera for ease. Right, I'm going to take a right here, so I'm going to put more left engine power on. Oh, maybe slightly too much there. Changing the camera again, sorry about this. 
Now I think that's the room we obviously to our left, but we'll go to the end, which would be nice. Turning down the throttle slightly. So yeah, using this differential engine power is a is a big aid. So if you do have two throttle system, I would disengage the pairing of them and use them individually. We need a bit more power here. We're going too slowly. You can see like a navigator's astrodome thing on the top of the plane from this view. I'm going to decrease the left engine. It turns more to the left. We loosen the wheel knock, it'll turn that much easier, as you see. increasing the throttles, more of the right than the left. I'm going to lock the tail wheel now. Decrease the revs. Move the camera. I guess legally speaking we should really stop at the stop line. I'll just do here. Should be checking if there is anything coming. Nothing coming that way. Nothing coming that way. Move on to the runway. Runway 36. So I presume runway 36 will kind of be flying dead north. Gotta get the power up, push on the right side. it up. That can kind of do. Make sure the tail wheel is locked. Tail wheel is free. You heard it, it's locked. Tail wheel is locked. Um, what do we need to do? We can maybe apply the brake. got the propellers on full. We've got it on auto rich I believe. Everything else is fine. See so the next important thing is moving the latch and then the gear which is the opposite switch button which I've got. So, got too many views the same here, but here we are. Right, we're about set. Uh, I think because it's a double-engined aircraft, it probably won't pull left or right. I haven't experienced that so far. So, I'm going to gradually increase the throttles. You can see the RPMs going up. As I say, the, the brake is on. I'm going to release that now. Oops. Sir. Right. Tail wheel is free. Tail wheel is Here we go, we're rolling. I'm going to, apparently you're not supposed to 
slam the throttles on. I'm having to turn it some rudder to the left. The tail wheel is up. We've got maximum power, it's off the ground. So we'll unlatch the gear. Hopefully the gear are up, or coming up. No, they're not. Let's see what's happening. Here are up. Right. Just try and buy the thing straight and level. I think we're oh what's happened there? Some downward trim going. Going to loosen up the. Don't need so many revs, so I'm going to put that on auto lean. Bring the props back. More trim down. Trying to trim it so I'm hands off. Lowering the throttles. Pilot side. Or we can be in the middle if you like. Or an outside look. Yeah, maybe think about turning off the landing, right? Our top panel. Landing lights off. And that's basically how you take off. You can probably do it smoother than I can. Now, to get the autopilot engaged, obviously you've got to have the aircraft trimmed to a good degree. Kind of bad. And I think you need to do that, and then you do that. All the pilots engaged. Regarding these boosters, I don't think we need them. So there you are, autopilot's on, we're flying to whatever the destination is. As I say, to change the uh, where we want to go, you see these red markers on this artificial horizon thing. So it doesn't work. Um, we can basically bring it, up, that's obviously down, go to the climb up. We're climbing up, the red marker moves a little, you see we get the nose above that marker. This marker here we move with the aeroline. So let's say turn to the, uh, to the right. Now still and the plane will whoops, roll. Probably want a bit of elevator on that, but anyway, let's have a look. 
can see the result from outside. There you go. It will continue to fly in that roll until you turn the red circle back to the 12 o'clock position. There we are. What could be easier? Well, thanks for tuning in. Next time we'll do a proper journey um, and a route ATC stuff. But thanks for joining me here. Couldn't you sign up for now?